Welcome to St. Andrew's Worship here in Encinitas, California. I'm Brenda Soule. I'm the rector here, and we want you to know whoever you are, wherever you are on your faith journey, you are welcome here. We are so pleased you decided to worship with us today. You'll find a bulletin online at standrewsepiscopal.org. Please join us now in singing the opening hymn. Festival day, best day that are held on forever. Day whereon Christ arose, breaking the kingdom of death. Oh, the fair beauty of God, forth of the winter arising. Every good gift of the year, now with its master returns. Festival day, blessed day that art hallowed forever. Day whereon Christ arose, breaking the kingdom of death. He who was nailed to the cross is born, ruler of nature. All things created on earth sing to the glory of God. Festival day, blessed day that art hallowed forever. Day whereon Christ arose, breaking the kingdom of death. Daily the lovers grows, adorned with the glory of blossom. Heaven her gates unwars, bringing her increase of love. Festival day, blessed day that art hallowed forever. Day whereon Christ arose, breaking the kingdom of death. Rise from the grave now, O Lord, who art author of life and creation, treading the pathway of death, life the restorest on all. Festival day, blessed day that art hallowed forever. Day whereon Christ arose, breaking the kingdom of death. Hallelujah. 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 Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia! 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 Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia! Alleluia! Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, for our redemption, gave your only begotten Son to death of the cross and by his glorious resurrection, delivered us from the power of our enemy. Grant us to die daily to sin that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his resurrection through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Give thanks 
brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, and which also you stand, through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaimed to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. We will now pray this psalm responsibly by half verse. Give, me, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His, his mercy endures, endures forever. Let Israel now proclaim. His mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song. And, and he has become my salvation. There is a sound of exultation and victory. In, in the, the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. I shall not die, but live. And, and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord has punished me sorely. But, but he did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them. I will offer thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of, of the Lord. 
he who is righteous may enter. I will give thanks to you, for you answered me. And now become, become my salvation. The same stone which the builders rejected has, has become, become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. And, and it is marvelous in our eyes. On this day, the Lord has acted. We, we will rejoice and be glad in it. A reading from John. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went towards the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and one at the feet. They said to her, woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, do not hold on to me because I have not yet ascended to the father, but go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my father and your father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and she told them that he had said these things to her. The word, the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. May the meditation of my heart and the words of my lips be pleasing to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So a lot of my summer days as a college student and then vacations as a young adult were spent sitting at Harry's nightclub. Just to be clear, I wasn't drinking. I was there because it was basically one of the only ways to spend time with my mother. She loved being with her customers, whether she was working or not. Several old farmers and a few townspeople would be sitting in the same bar stools every afternoon. I found it tedious that they told the same stories year after year, and I couldn't imagine that these guys weren't also bored with the same stories. But then one day, I realized what they were really up to. Maybe it was after I had taken a class about the power of story. I'm sure they weren't aware of it, but what they were doing is saying to each other, you belong to this group. Let me tell you a story so that you'll know who we are as a group. The more often the stories were told, the tighter their bond became. Recently, I heard a radio interview about the power of story. A neurologist reported that when brain patterns are observed while someone is reading or listening to fiction, the brain responds, although not quite as intensely, as if the person was actually having the experience in their life rather than hearing it or imagining it. For instance, when the story includes someone kicking a soccer ball with their left foot, the brain associated with the motor function of that foot is activated. A psychologist then explained how writing and listening to stories can lead to healing. Her studies show that as one becomes conscious of buried memories, for example, those stories can be rewritten in a positive way. 
It's not that the story is changed. It's that the person's perspective on the story changes. In doing so, their misplaced feelings of guilt and shame, for instance, are alleviated. To illustrate her point, she described a man who had unconsciously been blaming himself for his little brother's death for years. He was invited to write a poem about the day his brother died. And then as he shared that poem with his support group, he discovered the misplaced blame and was able to heal the trauma he had been carrying with him subconsciously all along. We encounter this idea of changing the perspective of the story in our reading from the Gospel of John this morning. Jesus essentially says to Mary, come and see me in a new way. Rewrite your story of how it is to be with me. You thought you would find a physical, unmoving body. But now, although you don't yet recognize me, you see me as the risen Christ. We come together each week as a faith community to tell our story as Christians, to describe all of God's saving acts for humanity throughout history, the many ways humanity fell short of righteous li living, and the multitude of ways God continues to call us all home to God's loving embrace. We share those stories to deepen our connections. We tell them to strengthen our faith. And we repeat the stories so that newcomers will come to understand that they too belong to our family and that they are God's beloved. One of my favorite St. Andrew's stories happened in the middle of our annual impromptu Easter pageant we used to do when we would come inside the nave for worship. It was about three or four years ago, and Pete and Anne's grandson, Zeke, became the focus of attention, even though he did not have a starring role. Right before Mary, whom I think was played by Debbie's granddaughter that year, right before Mary was supposed to come back into this altar area through this gate here, little Zeke closed the gate on her. He had been fascinated with that gate for months, he stood there, locked it, and kept guard, refusing Mary passage. Luckily, our chosen Mary was very resourceful. She ran around the side and came through the back entrance instead. And here's what I want you to take note of. It's only in the retelling of the story that we can shift the perspective. The powerful learning in that story isn't that we shouldn't involve little ones because they'll do things we don't expect. The powerful message is that Mary persevered. When you think about it, that picture of Mary finding another route to get to the risen Christ is a great image for us. Yes, Jesus was crucified and died, but more importantly, Jesus Christ lives on. Christ calls to us, just as to Mary, to find new ways of becoming aware of God in our lives. This idea of the resurrected Christ showing up in unexpected places reminds us that just doing things the way we normally do them might not get us closer to God. We might not we might need to try alternative ways to shift the perspective of our story. We tell our Easter story year after year to strengthen our bonds and to shift the perspective of the events so that we can see Christ in new ways and continue to develop our understanding of how the Holy Spirit is at work in our lives at all times. In doing so, our Good Friday trauma is healed, and we celebrate once again the power of our story, the power of God's all-encompassing love. Amen and Alleluia. Let us join together now with those who are committing themselves to Christ and renew our own baptismal covenant. Do you believe in God the Father? 
I believe in God the Father, the Almighty Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship in the breaking of the bread and in the prayers? I will, with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will, with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will, with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will, with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will, with God's help. In, pre in peace we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work, for our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the church of God for, for all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth for michael our presiding bishop and susan our bishop and all bishops and other ministers for, for all who serve god and god's church let us pray for our own needs and those of others including those on our parish prayer list repose of the soul for Elaine McLeavy, Jeffrey Teitelman. Prayers of comfort for the McLeavy family. Prayers of healing for Teitelman family, Dickie, Caetano, Mother Brenda, Amber, Jacob, Teresa, Jim, Barbara and Bill, Hildy, Corinne, Molly and Liam, Karen, Pat and Frank, Michelle. We also pray for those who are affected by the pandemic, those who are suffering from or have died from the virus, those who are mourning the loss of loved ones and the healthcare workers serving on the front lines of response. Almighty God, to whom our needs are known before we ask, help us to ask only what accords with your will and those good things which we dare not or in our blindness cannot ask. Grant us for the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Christ has risen today. Oh, 
unto Christ our heavenly King. Alleluia. Who endured the cross and grave? Alleluia. Sinners to redeem and save. Alleluia. But the pains which he endured. Salvation have procured. Alleluia. Now above the sky is King. Alleluia. Where the angels ever sing. Alleluia. Sing we to our God. is love. Alleluia. Praise Him, O ye heavenly host. Alleluia. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. A few announcements. This is time for our virtual offering plate to be passed around, metaphorically. We give you thanks in advance for the many ways you've been celebrating and contributing to the ministries here at St. Andrews. We rely on your generosity. So thank you for mailing in payments, finding a way to text in your bulletin, or making those through the online payment system. Thank you. We will not have any in-person worship on April 11th. So if you are planning on trying outdoor or drive-in church, wait until April 18th to do that. We have an adult confirmation class beginning. If you would like to be confirmed, received, or renew your vows to the Episcopal Church, you can do so on April 23rd when Bishop Susan visits. But to do that, you will need to come to a required Zoom class called Episcopal Basics. And even if you don't want to be confirmed, you can just come to the class. It will be at 11.15 um, coffee hour, 11.30 start time each week starting April 25th for four weeks. And today at 11.15, you can join us on Zoom for coffee hour. We have a tradition here at St. Andrews of offering a birthday and anniversary blessing to those celebrating this week. So for those of you celebrating birthdays, this is for you. Watch over your children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall, and in their heart may the peace which passes understanding abide all the days of their life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And for those of you celebrating anniversaries this week, I happen to know Carl and Beverly Curry are celebrating 65 years of marriage. So this is for them and anybody else celebrating an anniversary. Eternal God, look with favor upon the world you have made, and especially upon these couples. Give them wisdom and devotion in the ordering of their lives together, that each may be to the other a strength in need, a counselor in perplexity, a comfort in sorrow, and a companion in joy. Grant that their wills may be so knit together in your will, and their spirits in your spirit, that they may grow in love and peace with you and one another, all the days of their life. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, 
now and forever. Amen. And now as we gaze upon this bread and wine that has been previously consecrated in a Eucharistic prayer, we pray together this prayer of spiritual communion. Lord Christ, we believe that you are truly present in the Holy Sacrament. And since we cannot at this time receive communion, we pray you to come into our hearts. We unite ourselves with you and embrace you with all our heart, our soul, and our mind. Let nothing separate us from you. Let us serve you in this life until by your grace we come to your glorious kingdom and unending peace. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, the Creator, the Redeemer, and the Sustainer be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.